Hi viewers, we are trying to uh, demystify uh, research methods in, uh, uh, in the last uh, one video and we just keep on uh, uh, going, moving and uh, in our last video we have uh, said that uh, study designs are very very important to undertake a certain kind of uh, uh, you know, research activity by st study designs generally are divided into two general categories we have seen interventional studies as well as interventional studies interventional studies are those kinds of studies which are you know uh, characterized by some kinds of uh, characteristic where the researcher being involved uh, to manipulate to manipulate the, uh, the different kinds of dependent variables as well as the dependent uh, the, the, and observing the dependent variable. Uh, in the case of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, non-interventional studies, also known as observational studies, we have said uh, they are characterized by a situation where the researcher would steeply stay away from the intervention and see or record what is going on in that specific type of research activity. This is a broad category of uh, 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 divisions. And uh, in our previous video, we have seen the uh, exploratory type of study design. <coughs> this exploratory type of study design is, as we said, as the name indicates, a very fast, that is done with very low amount of budget, and in a certain circumstance where no new idea or no idea is available or no data is available for a certain condition or to expand uh, our businesses, we, we just do some uh, a very brief period of uh, time, for a brief period of time, uh, some surveys. That is exploratory, exploratory type of study design. And on the other hand also we said, when we are trying to plan, when you are trying to plan a very profound study design with with a significant amount of budget, we just go to the field and collect uh, some, some, some preliminary data for a very brief period of time. And thereby we get some insight into that idea and we analyze that data. And after, we, we, after the analysis, we go for further studies uh, of bigger picture. That is exploratory type of study design uh, a lot for instance for example we have said um, uh, uh, for example if you have a certain uh, business let's say a juice bar and if you want to uh, know uh, increasing the variety of different types of uh, the deliveries of the services would increase our, uh, increase uh, customer satisfaction then what we do is we do simple observations of customer behavior by gesture it can be by provision of very brief, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, survey questions like that, and then after we finish that one, uh, we uh, we design our new business model based on based on those exploratory type of study designs. Another example, maybe for example, if you have an FM channel, let's say for example, an FM station or a YouTube channel, and if you wanted to know the customer satisfaction of your uh, uh, customers, then you would, you know, uh, 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 submit or uh, uh, deliver some list of questions. For instance, uh, how did you get this channel? Uh, how often would you listen to the, our, our channel or our uh, radio station? Uh, would you recommend our channel to a certain friend or in a, uh, members of family? Uh, and uh, but I, new ideas to have to expand our uh, our services to our viewers like that, for example. This is exploratory type of study design. And uh, the other is uh, the uh, descriptive type of study designs. Descriptive type of study designs. By descriptive study designs, these are a little bit different from those of the, uh, the, 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 the preceding description of exploratory. In here, it's characterized by more descriptions, more descriptions, a lot of descriptions in uh, in much in numbers, in figures, in tabulations, in uh, in, in in graphs like that. Our findings would be uh, presented in such uh, characteristics. Uh, in descriptive study designs, descriptive study designs, person, place, time is one of the most important issues. 
You describe a lot of issues, a lot of issues in person, in place, limited by place and limited by time. This is a very characteristic of descriptive studies. Descriptive studies uh, are one of the most widely uh, utilized study designs in uh, many countries, including our Ethiopia. Uh, when you do descriptive study design, you, are, you, you need to think of at least four types of descriptive study designs. Those are uh, reports, case series, correlational studies, as well as cross-sectional studies. Uh, let's see one by one. Well, uh, in the case of case reports, the descriptive studies design in such a way that you would follow the specific person, a single individual, it can be a group of individuals, uh, perhaps sometimes also uh, institutions uh, uh, followed for certain time, for a certain period of time, and then they will be described in much details. So the issues will be uh, described in better details. Uh, this is case studies. It focuses on a single individual, a single individual. For example, if you uh, are trying to consider some issue, for instance, let's say some disease, new disease, it can be, or it can be old disease, okay, the, the, the patient comes to you and then you would, uh, do all of the, the important parameters and after that if you uh, want to know detailed investigations about that issue you record everything including the literature reviews including the literature issues that are related with that specific uh, conditions and uh, you consult laboratories you consult different uh, clinical findings and at the end of the day you record in usually in brief pages you describe the case and publishing uh, case reports, usually usually unusual cases, unusual cases or you know awkward what you call uh, cases are usually uh, those cases that is that attract attention. In the case of case series, it's almost the same uh, normally. The uh, mere difference being that um, in the case of case series the follow-up would be for a very longer period of time. You follow a single individual, a group with related characteristics, or an institution, let's say, uh, for example, one institution, and you follow that, you follow, you follow that institution for a certain period of time, and you come up with some kinds of findings, that is what you call the case series. These are uh, also not uncommon to undertake in many uh, parts of the world. The second descriptive study is correlational study. Correlational study is characterized by a situation where you just see some association between some factors, some factors that are related with a certain issue but you never take samples or specimens. You consider the whole population. You consider the whole population in a certain area. You see a certain independent variable or a certain uh, predisposing factor. It can be a certain characteristic. And another issue that you might contemplate on whether or not it is related with that characteristic uh, would be compared together okay but usually in the case of correlational studies people use an already available data from database for instance in Ethiopia if you are interested to undertake correlation between income level of a family with number of children in the whole country then you may collect an already available database from maybe central statistical agency or from uh, any local government institutions you collect the specific data you already available database is simply you put onto a microsoft uh, excel spreadsheet 
and or a software and analyze it. Okay? Uh, for instance, another best example for correlational study. Car accident is very common in Ethiopia, as you know. Very common in Ethiopia. And if you want to relate this degree of association of car accident in Ethiopia with the presence or absence of license in individuals that are facing the, the car accidents, then what you do is you just go to the traffic office of local uh, administrators or from that federal level, for instance, you take the database and you just list the whole car accidents on one category and on the other category you put whether there is a license in a specific individuals that faced that accident and whether there is no license. Then at the end of the day, for example, you, may, uh, you, you might read your result as, as, as this. Uh, those individuals who had no license, driving license, are more prone to face car accident than those with uh, legal uh, driving license. We may come up with this one. Or we may say, oh, this is not really a role. So for instance, in the preceding example, if there is association between having or not having a license would have something to do with uh, the degree of car accident in our country, then that's positive correlation. If there is no, if, if the data would not indicate you uh, the degree of any association, for example, any association, any correlation, okay, it is, it is known as R, uh, then what you do is uh, that, that, that data would show you no significant, uh, no significant associations. So, car accident has nothing to do with having or not having a driving license. You may come up with that kind of, that is called no association. As other is negative association. Negative association where, uh, or negative correlation, I mean correlation. In the case of negative correlation, it has, uh, it, it is never correlated. It's never correlated. So, three types, as I said, positive correlation is there, no correlation or negative correlation. So, to sum up, correlational studies are undertaken uh, to see if there is association between a certain factor or no association between that given factor with a certain interest of outcome. This is correlational study. Mind you, there is no uh, uh, use of samples in this. There is no use of uh, the data collection and the likes. You just use available data to undertake the, uh, the, the, the study. Uh, the first very known example of uh, globally, there is what you call Framingham study. There is what you call Framingham study, very known example uh, of uh, study in the world uh, that came up with a certain uh, very important, uh, very, very important uh, uh, findings in related in issues related with uh, uh, heart diseases. In Framingham study, this is a place actually. Framingham is a city in Massachusetts, United States. Uh, this project was initiated in 1940s. 1940s in a very small, it's a, a small at, at the present at, at that time. The number of population was very small, around 5,000 people, or, which are the cohort, we call them, actually. And what they did was, there was a lot of uh, data that obtained from that specific people in relation with heart diseases, okay? Especially arteriosclerosis disease, in relation between Work, uh, families in marital situations in uh, demographic conditions and the likes and that study was initiated in 1948 actually and the project went on for around 20 years on there is a lot of follow-up and the association of heart disease with some predisposing factors predisposing factors familial it can be or many other issues where 
rigorously studied. And after 20 years of uh, studying, it was renewed in 1972, another generation, second generation of population were involved. And in 2002, it also was also renewed. And up to fourth generation, still it is being undertaken, up to fourth generation of people from grandmothers, grandfathers, up to the grandsons and granddaughters. It just kept on whether hereditary issues, marital issues, and everything is involved in there. So this is this is the the the, the, the insights that were made that were made uh, for the scientific community around three thousand publications. Scientific publications were uh, generated from from Ingham study. So correlational studies has a very very long uh, importance in terms of histories. If you wanted to relate, if you wanted to relate. Cigarette smoking or smoking behavior against lung cancer, if you wanted to associate. Scientists were long contemplating on whether or not cigarette smoking would be related with lung cancer. And in 1930s, this study was initiated globally. Uh, in 1939, the first person uh, known by his name as uh, Muller in Germany, Munich in Germany, uh, he established some correlation that really existed in cigarette smoking versus lung cancer. He published the first article in 1939. Further on, a lot of works were embarked and a lot of findings were in place. Okay? The characteristic is that whether there is some association between a given factor of interest or no association is investigated in correlation study at population level. Usually very feeble or very weak association may be there. So further studies, further studies dissociate usually, like analytical, analytical studies, experimental studies, for instance, or maybe cohort studies, case control studies, maybe of necessity. However, they would shed a very important light as a first impression in correlational studies.